Would you join me in the prayer of preparation? Holy and loving God, help us to quiet our minds and open our hearts to receive what you will reveal to us this evening. May we breathe in your love and breathe out all that is not needed for this time and place. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Welcome friends, um, welcome to those of you who are here in the sanctuary and to those of you who are online. This is our Ash Wednesday service. It's the beginning of Lent and so we are taking this time, we'll have the imposition of ashes uh, later on in the service. And also at the end of the service you might want to get out now maybe a pen or a pencil we're going to do something toward the end so you'll be prepared for that um, when we're ready so those of you who are online as you look at your bulletins please have a writing instrument uh, ready to uh, use when we come to that part of the service so I welcome you and um, ask you to join in the hymn which is on page 322 but the words are in your bulletin Tonight we will hear scriptures from Isaiah 58. And after each one, I would invite you to join together in unison in our response in prayer. Shout out and do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake their ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Let us pray. Catch me in my anxious scurrying, Lord, and hold me in this Lenten season. Hold my feet to the fire of your grace and make me attentive to my mortality, that I may begin to die now to those things that keep me from living with you and with my neighbors on this earth, to grudges and indifference. To my fascination with false securities, to my addiction 
countless dreams to my arrogant insistence on how it has to be, to my corrosive fear of dying someday, which eats away the wonder of living this day, and the adventure of losing my life in order to find it in you. Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, here I am. Catch me in my aimless scurrying, Lord, and hold me in this Lenten season. Hold my heart to the beat of your grace and create in me a resting place, a kneeling place, a tiptoe place where I can recover from this disease of my grandiosities, which fill my mind and calendar with busy self-importance. 
that I may become vulnerable enough to dare intimacy with the familiar, to listen to your sermons, and to watch squint-eyed for your pain of a child in the hunger of the street people, in the fear of the contagion of terrorism all around it, in the rage of those oppressed of sex or race, in the smoldering resentments of exploited third world nations, in the sullen apathy of the poor and ghetto strangled people, in my lonely doubt, and limping ambivalence. And somehow, during this season of sacrifice, enable me to sacrifice time and possessions and securities to do something, something about what I see, something to turn the water of my words into the wine of will and risk into the bread of blood and blisters, into the blessedness of need of a cross picked up, a Savior fought.
and reading further in Isaiah. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Catch me in my mindless scurrying, Lord, and hold me in this Lenten season. Hold my spirit to the beacon of your grace. Grant me light enough to walk boldly, to love aggressively. Grant me peace enough to want more, to work for more, and to submit to nothing less, and to fear only you, only you. Bequeath me, not be calm seas, slack sails, and premature benedictions, but breathe into me a torment, storm enough to make within myself and from myself something, something new, something saving, something true, a gladness of heart, a pitch for a song in the storm, a word of praise lived, gratitude shared, a cross stared, a joy received. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, here we are again, Ash Wednesday, 40 days, the beginning of another season of Lent. 40 days to engage in spiritual disciplines, including such practices as reading the Bible and spending more time in prayer to draw nearer to God. 
40 days to try a new spiritual practice, maybe such as walking the labyrinth or centering prayer, which is a time of stillness in the presence of the divine. And during Lent, some people commit to some type of volunteer work. They do this as a Lenten practice. For example, the Lenten Day of Service next Sunday that we'll have in Memorial Hall is such an opportunity. And one of the most well-known practices is the commitment to fast or to abstain from something during the 40 days. For example, some abstain from a habit, like smoking or swearing. Some people abstain from screen time. I had a friend at work who didn't watch television for the whole Lenten season. Some abstain from social media. And then others give up food or drink, such as sweets or chocolate, something that's a favorite of theirs. My mom used to give up sugar in her coffee. And in the last five years, I think she had discovered the sweetened condensed milk. And I mean, that made her coffee yummy. So for her to give that up was a real sacrifice during Lent. But I used to tell my family that giving up okra, their least favorite food, did not count. So scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness following his baptism. It was for a time of reflection and self-examination in order for him to prepare for his ministry. During that time, Jesus fasted for 40 days. Now Satan tempted Jesus three times. And how many times did Jesus resist? How many? I see somebody waving fingers. Okay, so Jesus resisted three times. He resisted all of Satan's attempts. And the central point of this narrative of the temptation of Jesus is to point out to us that the answer to the question is, who will determine Jesus' actions? With each temptation Satan by Satan, we ask, Will Jesus rely on God and be faithful to God's will? And that's the question that we find the Israelites being confronted with in the readings from Isaiah that David read this evening. Will the people return to God and let God guide their actions? Will they rely on God and be faithful to God's will? Today's text opens with God commanding the prophet to address the community that has strayed, broken the covenant. The message that God once delivered is so important that the prophet is told to shout it out, to lift up his voice like a trumpet. Get the people's attention. This is a matter of great urgency. God accuses the people of rebellion and sin. But now on one hand, the people make claims about wanting to be in relationship with God. They talk as though they are righteous, that they're living righteously, that they're faithful, that they live exemplary, pious lives and haven't broken the covenant. And then they accuse God of not noticing their pious acts of fasting and humility. So I'm going to give you the Denise Diab interpretation of God's response. Are you kidding me? You can't be serious. First of all, the fasts that you're doing are not even what I've asked you for. Besides that, you don't do the things to get me. The only reason you do these things is to get me to notice you, to get my attention. But what I notice is that even on your days of fasting, you exploit all of your workers and you fight among yourselves. God says, I can't hear you when you bow down in worship. Your heart is far from me. You care for nothing but your own self-interest. But then in God's mercy, because God desires to be in relationship, 
God tells the people, the fast that I choose is to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke and to break every yoke and to let the oppressed people go free. Then reminiscent of the words that Jesus will echo later in his own ministry, God continues, share your bread with the hungry, bring the homeless poor into your house. When you see the naked, cover them. As we begin to study the Ten Commandments during our Lenten small groups, one of the things that Eugenia Gamble, the author of the study book, points out is that where a sin is forbidden, the contrary duty is commanded. Let me repeat that. Where a sin is forbidden, the contrary duty is commanded. In other words, where God guides us regarding what to avoid, God is also guiding us about what to embrace. God is calling the Israelites to embrace being the provider of justice, bread, clothing, housing. At the same time, God is also warning the people to avoid selfishness, greed, indifference, and exploitation. Because these are the things that not only destroy individuals, they destroy whole communities. God promises that if the people do these things, provide justice, bread, clothing, housing, what they have desired and wish for will come to pass. The first benefit of their obedience is the indwelling light of the divine that shines on the outside as a reflection of their own internal well-being and healing. It shines and it reflects God's protection. The people will get what they wish for, to be seen, to be cared for, and to be protected by God. When they cry out, God will answer them, here I am. Friends, like the Israelite and like Jesus, we must decide each and every day, will we rely on God and be faithful to God's will? Will our fast? this Lenten season be the fast that God chooses to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to break every yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to, hear, to share our bread with the hungry, to bring the homeless poor into our houses, and when we see the naked, to cover them. May it be so for you and for me. So this is the time where we will look at a self-examination. So one of the practices that you are invited to practice during the Lenten season is the examine. So it's on page six and seven of your bulletin. And this self-examination, uh, we do it. You can do it on a daily basis or you can do it on a week basis. And then sometimes you might want to do it like to look at your whole year. So tonight we'll be looking at your day to day, or you choose which period of time that you want to look at. So if you get your pencils or pens out, your writing instrument. So I'll lead you through a guided meditation. This is, um, this meditation kind of reflects the questions that are being asked are being asked by God in terms of the fast that you choose. And so it also reflects um, Jesus' um, discussion with his disciples at the end in Matthew 25, 40, where he's saying that just as you do to the least of these, you have done so to me. So the first question that um, I'd like for you to turn to would be just we begin. So we'll begin. I'll give you about a minute to go through. Just You don't have to write a whole paragraph. Just kind of jot down some words that will key your mind so when you go home and maybe reflect on this some more, you'll remember what you were thinking. So let's take a deep breath and kind of center ourselves. So we begin by asking God to guide our minds 
in our hearts as we do an honest search of our day. So we're asking God to guide our minds and hearts. So number one, we say, spend a few minutes, moments, in gratitude, thanking God for one or two of the blessings, big or small, that you receive today. So what, what blessings do you recall that you received today? We go on to the second space where we ask God the following. So of the people I encountered today, who was the most outcast? Or who was the weakest and most fragile? Or who was the most difficult for me to be around? So as you're reflecting on this, just kind of replay it in your mind when you encountered this person and jot a few words down to describe that encounter. Next, speak to God about your observations. Tell God your thoughts, words, and actions toward that person or that situation. Ask God for forgiveness for any thoughts, words, or actions that were unkind or uncharitable. And remember to thank God for the moments when you seem to have had the right disposition. When we move to number four, Ask God, what do you see when you see this person, Lord? Lord, what do you have to say to me about this person? Number five, ask God, what am I called to do for this person? Who am I called to be for this person?
Now ask God something more concrete and specific. God, what, if anything, am I called to do or be for this person tomorrow or the next time I see them or someone who reminds me of them? Ask God to give you the ability to do what God is calling you to do. And you close by making some sort of resolution if you feel called to do so. You thank God for what has been revealed and ask God's blessings for the person or the situation. Amen.
Throughout the history of the church, the Ash Wednesday service begins the season of Lent with the invitation to the Lenten discipline through the invitation and imposition of the ashes. Christians have received the ashes on their forehead first to remind us of our mortality. Ashes remind us that God made us from the dust of the earth, and to dust we shall return. And so as we walk this season of fasting and reflection and recognizing our own sinfulness and separation from God and the reality of our mortality, the ashes provide a stark reminder of that reality. But we also make the ash symbol and the symbol of a cross to remind us that the story does not end with our frailty but continues throughout Lent to Holy Week and Good Friday and the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus who came to do what we cannot do for ourselves, provide reconciliation and hope and a path to God. And we make the symbol of the ashes of a cross on the forehead, the same place where that same symbol comes at baptism, a time of welcome into the covenant community when Jesus heard the words, this is my son, the beloved. The mark on the forehead reminds us that God's love points us to Easter Sunday and to hope that death and mortality are not the end, but we have much to look forward to. And so, as you feel called, we invite you to come forward to receive, if you would like, the symbol of the, the ancient Ash Wednesday cross on one's forehead and then to return to one's seat to, to meditate on this Lenten journey. Denise, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return.
Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, today begins a period of inter-reflection, inner reflection and examination. The days stretch before us and invite us inward to that silent, holy space that holds your spirit. This special time beckons us to see our lives through Christ's eyes and the truth and reality of your love incarnate. May our fast be the fast you choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke, to share bread with the hungry, to ensure that those without shelter and protection have safe, clean, and habitable spaces. This day, we hold in your presence those who mourn, those who are in need of your healing touch or your rest for the weary. May we be instruments of peace, justice, and love. Give us the grace to enter the space of these Lenten days with anticipation of our meeting you. And when we open our souls to your presence, let your loving kindness flow over us and seep into every chamber of our hearts so that we may do all that we can do for the sake of Christ who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we leave this space today for the Lenten season, the next 40 days, let us, let us think on, let us meditate on, let us reflect on. What is the fast that we will choose? May we choose the fast that God chooses. And so I invite you to take your bulletin and, and use it as a meditation reflection guide throughout the season. And so as you go forward, go forward in love and in peace and in justice and be that for others. Now may the grace of God, may the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you.